Morning, Keto Peeps. I thought I would just check in today. I had a specific question. So today I wanted to cover uh, the difference between like a classic keto diet. What's the difference between that and say somebody who is already fat adapted? Um, because they can be two kind of different things. Um, keto is, you know, basic, um, you know, high fat, low carb, moderate protein. But when you come to a certain point in weight loss and healing your body, you may need to tweak. So um, classic keto, of course, is 75-25% in your percentages. And that a lot of times will come out to be, you know, uh, 20 grams of carbs, 60 to 70 grams of protein, and, um, you know, 120, 130 grams of fat, depending on your height and your weight. So, usually a keto calculator, you can figure that out thereabouts. Um, I'm not big on calculators. I think baseline, those numbers I just gave you, work for everybody. Uh, I know there's some individuals that are a lot higher in weight that are going to need more uh, based on a caloric number. And then again, I don't go by calories either. So uh, you have to do what works best for you. So um, the core of your keto diet, uh, the foundation of all keto are those basic percentages that I told you. So um, those would be for people that are not fat adapted, are not in ketosis, you know, um, mostly sedentary people that have health issues, uh, insulin resistance, uh, hormonal imbalances, um, and it's good for, of course, uh, women pre or post menopausal women. Um, sorry, I'm reading from my notes because my brain <laughs> can't hold all this information and I don't want to forget anything. So, um, you want to consume, of course, um, a good balance of protein, fat, uh, and carbs, carbs coming from vegetation. And, um, of course, you can do a bulletproof coffee if you so desire. Just remember that a lot of times that will um, be used as a meal replacement, not with a meal, because a lot of times that will give you a huge dose of calories and fat that uh, you may not need. You know, it's not that you don't want it because you do want high fat, but a lot of times people will add those bulletproofs in and not realize that um, they're taking in, you know, five, six thousand calories a day <laughs> because they're adding two or three of those. So you just watch uh, your numbers, you know. I said I don't do calories, but of course, don't go insane. You know, obviously, if you're going to add in a huge amount of calories, uh, that's going to overtake keto and uh, you'll be off balance. You want to keep a good balance. There are no carb ups. In regular old keto, we don't do carb ups. So if you're uh, already in ketosis and you're fat adapted and you know this, why? Because you're never hungry. Uh, you can go long stretches of time without getting that hangry feeling. Um, you know, you're, you're feeling good at using your fuel effectively and you're, you're living off your fats. So this would be more like a 60% fat, 20% carbs, maybe 30 and 20% protein. I mean, you can play with your numbers and um, you can up your carbs a little bit. Now, this is, you know, a bone of contention with some people in that they feel like you still want to keep, even after being fat adapted, you want to keep your carbs super low. That's not the issue. You don't always have to do that. Now, I'm not saying for everyone, I'm just saying that it's something that you need to determine for yourself. When I became fat adapted, I did up my carbs to, I think I started at 30 and worked my way up. Now that's net carbs and that's from 
keto foods, so vegetation, my greens. And you know, y'all know I love my salads. So if you're going to add in carbs, add them in naturally from, you know, vegetation. So you can adapt however you need to adapt. If you feel like a couple times a week you want to add in whatever it is, once you're fat adapted, what that means is your body will take in those carbs, right? And you'll still you'll still store them as glycogen, but your body will revert back to burning fat once those carbs are burnt off. So you won't it won't kind of, it'll knock you out, but you get right back in. It, it's not as big of a deal uh, as when you first start and you're just in ketosis. Fat adaption means you've got all the enzymes for, the, for you to burn fat so you don't have to produce those anymore. You don't have to go through that beginning stage. So as long as you keep your carbs, you know, within limits and you don't go hog wild and have a full Mexican dinner, um... You know, because you eat four or five hundred grams of carbs, yeah, that, that might impact you negatively. So just keep that in mind. So who is this good for? This is good for people that are already adapted, already in ketosis, um, that do, you know, exercise. Um, my take on exercise is whatever works for you. It doesn't have to be regimented. I like incline walking, I like light weights, I love walking in general, get as much of it as you can, take the stairs, park far away from stores so you have to walk more, you know, any walking you can do is good walking. And, um, you know, if you want to incorporate higher stress, higher intensity um, workouts, that's good too because you're going to have more carbs if you're adding more carbs um, through vegetation, you will have more carbs to burn. So, um, and sometimes if you get into a plateau where you're not losing weight anymore, it's good to kind of shake up your diet and add in things that you wouldn't normally have and see how your body reacts. A lot of times that'll, your body will go, oh, hey, and drop some weight. So uh, keep that in mind. So you want to you know, two or three times a week, take in more carbs, like I said. Um, you can probably benefit from doing that just before you work out uh, or just before you go to bed uh, if you're taking in extra carbs. And, um, you know, that that's, that's an adapted fat burner kind of keto. So if you wanted to um, do that kind of keto, you remember you already have to be in ketosis and already have to be fat adapted, and generally that takes a few months for people. So if you just started, probably not a good idea to incorporate that. I would stick more to the classic, um, you know, and, and work from there. Now there's all kinds of different ways to do keto. There's all kinds of ways you can tweak it depending on... You know, maybe you're a, a weightlifter and you like to have a carb up before a workout. More power to you if, if it works for you. Now, if it comes to a point where it's not working and, you know, you're drinking your, uh, you know, you're drinking your protein drinks and your, your carb loaded drinks before you work out and you're stalled or whatever, you have to rethink what you're doing and, um, and examine your diet. You know, I'm all for keto, but I'm also all for, you know, doing what works for your body because not everybody is the same. So just keep that in mind when you're starting a keto diet, especially uh, if you are a weight loss patient uh, and you've been trying or you've had regain and you're jumping on the keto bandwagon and think that this is going to, you know, absolutely work for me and I'm just going to do really strict keto. You may not want to start out just really strict. You may want to start out slower and ease your way in, especially if you've had a hard, high carb diet before this. So keep that in mind. Always remember there's different ways to do keto. No one way is the right way. Okay, there. If you 
I search it on Google, you can find a dozen different ways to do keto and they all work for different people. So you have to do what works for you and that's it. So um, I just want to make that clear. Uh, I will talk to y'all later and make sure you like and subscribe. I'm going to be posting um, new videos. We're leaving on vacation on Friday. So I'm going to be doing posts about, you know, eating while camping, eating on the cruise ship, um, just all different kinds of um, scenarios, and probably some video of us in the woods um, doing our thing. So, all right, y'all. Take care. See you later. Bye.